Brigadier Shama sir, I think you are there, but I can't see you. Sir is there. Shama Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. It's Good so wonderful sir. to have you here as expert. Yeah. And nice. uh, what a very, very warm welcome. And taking this Dr. Jyoti Agarwal, Dr. Jyoti Bali, Dr. Shivani Sateva, and Dr. Sunita Arora, and Dr. Jyoti Malik. So very, very warm welcome all experts. We are there to discuss very good topics today. The topic for today first is risk management in cryopreservation in ART. And for that, there's a great speaker, great man, great human being, and a simple soul, I must say, Dr. Sushma Ved, ma'am. She's a founder, sort of embryologist in our center. She's the lady behind my center. It's my baby IVF center. I thank you very much, ma'am. From core of my heart, I must say thanks to you for giving us so much strength, so much positivity, and all positive results because of you. And we have learned a lot. You are a, such a fitness person, such a sweet person, always smiling. Wonderful to have you. And I think now I'll request Dr. Megha to share her CD, Dr. Sushma Ma'am's CD. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Seema. Good afternoon, ma'am, and all our panelists. We welcome all our great esteemed speakers and our panelists. There was a break due to COVID uh, for this infertility meet, which was destined to happen at 20th. Okay, but now we are with the back with the. Mega, you're not audible. Acha. Now I am audible. Yes, yes. So I missed everything. Yeah. OK, OK. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome my team speakers and our great panel for this infertility meet uh, from the GF West. There was a break of this meet due to the COVID for a few months. Now we are back with the same enthusiasm. So I would like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Shukma West. Uh, Ma'am is very dear to us, as Dr. Shuma said that she is a pioneer in uh, embryology and ICSI in India. And also she is the Open Center. It's my baby IV center, which holds its origin to Dr. Sushma Ghar. Ma'am has worked in uh, Germany for around 12 years. And with now more than 30 years of experience in ICSI, she is a visiting consultant to many IV centers in Delhi. She has trained many embryologists in Delhi too. And so uh, she would speak on risk management in cryopreservation preservation in ART today. So now over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Megha and Dr. Seema. And nice to see you, Dr. Rama Raju, after a long time. I met you in Delhi when you delivered lecture at uh, RR Hospital when Dr. Sharma was the uh, director of the RR uh, IVF Center. And thank you, Megha, and thank you, Dr. Seema. And uh, because of the postponement, ultimately now we are able to uh, conduct over this meeting. So I will uh, switch on to my uh, uh, screen. Uh, the cryopreservation uh, is the routine procedure in every IVF laboratory today. The number of frozen embryo and gametes are much higher now than earlier days because of the increasing number of donor oocyte cycles where the recipient cycle does not require synchronization with that of donor and all freezing, all freeze policy in self cycle. Secondly, with the advent of vitrification, where the recovery of the frozen embryo is, is almost 100% and in, compar in comparison to the old uh, slow freezing method, where we always have fear that which embryo will survive and which will not. But it is not the case in vitrification. And secondly, vitrification is uh, 
the procedure which uh, which can be done uh, within 15 10 to 15 minutes whereas with the slow freezing method it used to take four hours to run a program and now i think for the last one decade uh, people are doing uh, uh, tire preservation using vitrification and the younger generation i think they don't have any idea about the slow freezing program now um, Ma'am, sorry to interrupt. If you are huh. changing the slides, it was not changing till now. Now it, it is changed. Yeah. It has changed now. Can you see and hear me? Yeah, ma'am. Now it is shifting. Oh, yes, ma'am. So for, uh, for every uh, prior preservation uh, procedure and storage of embryos and gametes, we require liquid nitrogen. And this is uh, the nitrogen gas which is present Fifth, it is fifth abundant element in the universe. It is 78.3% by volume and 75% pi by weight. And it is created by the fusion process of the stars. Under high pressure, this nitrogen gas turns into liquid with a low temperature of minus 95 degrees centigrade. It is cryogenic, colorless, odorless, non-inflammable and non-toxic. The hazards of liquid nitrogen. If it comes, if the liquid nitrogen comes in contact of a skin or eyes, it causes frostbite. If it is inhaled, it can cause uh, dizziness and asphyxia. Even it can lead to death. You can see uh, this fellow is enjoying inhaling the liquid uh, liquid nitrogen vapors without knowing the consequences uh, of inhaling it. So to protect personally, one has to use devices like glasses, face shield, cryo gloves, aprons, and the, all the staff should be trained uh, properly when they are using, they are handling liquid nitrogen. Now, these are the some protective devices like aprons, gloves, and uh, shoes. To protect the eyes with liquid nitrogen, one can have, use glasses and face shield. Face shield. The hazards of exclusion. During thawing, there is an increased pressure in the devices, so it can the device can exclude during thawing. But uh, it can happen if the device is not of the good quality. If so, one should always take care in using the freezing device of the good quality. There can what can happen? There can be supply failure. So in 2018, in a paper in USA, in the Oyo Clinic. They lost 4,000 nitrogen embryos because the alarm in the storage tank did not work. And they informed the patient that uh, your embryos are destroyed. And officially, they informed the patient. There was another fertility clinic in San Francisco there where there was no liquid nitrogen or it dried up and it destroyed thousands of frozen eggs and embryos, and the patients were informed accordingly for that. I want to share my one experience for supply failure in Delhi, in a very big hospital. And what happened? I went uh, you, normally in the IUF laboratory at nine o'clock, and we have to do some point. When I opened the storage container it was absolutely dry and it was very very shocking for me because previous day we have done freezing and i checked the liquid it was full later on we came to know that somebody with because of animity did it and the fault was that it was a big hospital and the key of the IVF laboratory was kept where all the other key was kept. 
so uh, we did not have full control of the ayurved magnetry i think in the evening somebody came opened the lab and he took out all the liquid nitrogen later on it was proved that it was done because of anonymity but in india we don't have this type of policy that we inform the patient that this this have happened and your embryos are not at all there this or destroyed so it was very difficult for me to explain all the patient that every time they come we thaw and they say we say your embryos are not of the good quality it took me one year to face this problem so this can also happen so what i will suggest the key of the ivf laboratory should be there with a responsible person and only those people should be allowed to enter uh, in the lab those who are only working there so this uh, i am sharing this this is i think one of the uh, very shocking uh, experience in my life so supply failures uh, reasons can be lack of daily inspection and documentation of liquid nitrogen levels in the storage tank delivery problems with the vendor which we all face <laughs> off and on failure in alarm system or storage tank i think failure i think we don't have alarm system in india i have not experienced but what i feel if you check it at least liquid nitrogen at least if you check it if you are regularly doing ivf cycles if you check it in 4 days or 5 days it is okay it does not evaporate so fast so supply failure what precaution we should take we should always have one backup source of liquid nitrogen and appropriate written procedure and training for all relevant staff for dealing with supply problems daily inspection and documentation of liquid nitrogen level in the storage tank should be done there can be contamination on the outer side of the device during filling gets contaminated or microbial transmission through the storage device the cross contamination can occur leakage because of the leakage or breakage of cryo devices inside the storage tank to assess the presence of viral rna dna in spent culture media used after ovum pick up or embryo culture in liquid nitrogen used for ovum site embryo vitrification in patients zero positive for human hiv hepatitis b and hepatitis c positive patients those who are going under ivf cycles so it was published in fertility and sterility in 2012 they took a zero positive patient a hiv 6 patient a cv 11 patient a cv 6 patient a cv plus hepatitis b uh, the uh, one patient with that and they uh, uh, they uh, 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 check the viral load uh what the media was used during ovum pick up embryo culture oocyte vitrification the liquid nitrogen used for vitrification and embryo vitrification and they tested the presence of viral load with pcr and they found it they were all negative so all the samples analyzed tested negative for the detection of rna dna so they concluded that we have not detected viral seekers after culture and vitrification of oocyte and embryos uh, from hiv hpv scv zero positive patients these findings represent good evidence of the lack of risk of cross contamination among zero positive patients even using an open device for vitrification so the bacteria and fungi more than 60% bacteria they don't not survive during freezing and five freezing in culture medium without antibiotic the fungi are the most sensitive 
after these conditions, 90% reduction in fungus concentration in human semen after freezing. Still, there are reports of fungi and bacteria found in the debris of liquid nitrogen storage containers. A few people, they use uh, the gases stage of uh, nitrogen, but uh, um, it does not fulfill the uh, criteria that the temperature of minus 195 is not maintained. Secondly, there is formation of ice crystal with electrostatic charge when the water vapors in the air has contact with liquid nitrogen. These crystals capture microorganisms in the air and then drop in the um, uh, storage container. I have not used uh, uh, gases stage of liquid uh, nitrogen and time. The sterilization of liquid nitrogen. One can use ultraviolet rays. There is no impact of, on reproductive outcome or 0.22 micrometer poly tetrafluoroethylene uh, filter. Sterilization of liquid nitrogen storage device and dry shipper. One can use any chemical what we are using to clean the IVF laboratory. The chemicals and embryos. Poor documentation leads to loss or misplacement of samples. Precaution to be taken, proper documentation, extremely important. Cryo device must be labeled clearly with patient name and date. You can see the name should be written very clearly on the cryo device and the date. It is a, it should be written very, very clearly. One should have proper documentation also. We, uh, if you, uh, you have to write the name of the patient, patient husband, and the ID of the patient, which container you have stored, and what is the color of the document. And the cryo devices should be fully labeled. These are the some cryo devices. These are goblets with different colors. So when you freeze, and store them in these goblets. You can write the patient's name, which container and which color you had kept the uh, um, uh, frozen device in the cryo, uh, this goblet. So you can never have any problem if you follow this system. Uh, if you thaw it or you find after 10 years, 20, you will always find it. But it should be documented very, very properly. The cryopreservation facilities, it should be safely located outside the IVF laboratory, but for safety reason, with a visible access to the interior, via a window or a camera, adequate ventilation and low oxygen alarm should be installed. Cryo storage unit should be continuously monitored and equipped with alarm system detecting any out of range temperature and or levels of liquid nitrogen. The ASM are guidelines for human endology, a written protocol should include cryoprotection use, media use, type of freezing container, straw, vial or MPU, stage of embryo freezing, freezing rate including procedure for manual or automatic sealing and storage conditions. The center must look at their resources in a risk management contest to believe that patients are unaware of such risk is irresponsible. Indeed, patients' expectations are constantly on the increase and they more or less expect such measures to be placed already. There should be proper SOPs and the training equipment, equipments and materials on the facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. That was an excellent and quick talk. Um, very important points which you have shared with us. I think every IBS consultant must know this. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, ma'am.
Thank you very much, ma'am. It was really excellent, and uh, even we could add on to our knowledge also.